Hi, this is Mike Mazzalongo, BibleTalk.tv. Uh, today we're going to start a brand new uh, series of lessons uh, based on the, uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, also, this series is uh, specifically designed for small groups. So if you have a small group and you want a discussion series, uh, this one here entitled Understanding and Obeying the Ten Commandments, uh, I believe will be a very good uh, uh, study for your uh, group. So there will be a, a teaching portion that I begin with and then afterwards uh, on your screen you'll see uh, several discussion questions that you can use uh, for follow-up after I'm finished my uh, remarks. So the topic that we're going to be studying uh, entitled Understanding and Obeying the Ten Commandments. And the first lesson in this uh, series is entitled The Ten Commandments in the 21st Century. Uh, I suppose uh, a good place to start with um, um, on a study like this is to examine uh, the relevance of the Ten Commandments uh, for today. So when discussing this topic, the most obvious question for Christians is the following. Uh, as a Christian in the 21st century, what value do the Ten Commandments have for me today? Well, we need to understand uh, some of the background of the Ten Commandments in order to answer this particular question. The Ten Commandments were given to Moses by God approximately 3,400 years ago uh, in the desert while the Jewish people were escaping Egyptian slavery and they were traveling to the Promised Land, of course now called Israel. Um, the commandments consist of 10 succinct commands that are divided into two categories. The first four commands have to do with man's duty uh, to God. The last six commands have to do with man's duty to, uh, to other people, how uh, people treat other people. Uh, they're listed in uh, Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 to 17. Won't read them right away, but we'll get around to reading them as we go through our lesson material. Now we're going to go over each of these commands individually in the weeks to come. Uh, but for today's uh, lesson, let's get back to the question of their relevancy to the, um, to the modern Christian. What value do these commands have for today? Well, the answer for that and other Bible questions is contained in the Bible. We go to Romans chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, and we read the following. Paul writes, Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be closed and all the world may become accountable to God, because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. And so we see by what Paul is teaching here that the commandments are God's instrument to reveal sin, to point out sin in the individual, to expose it, and also to explain what are the causes and what are the results of sin. Now for the non-Christian, this is important because only when he is aware of his sins and their consequences does he begin to seek forgiveness, not before. I mean, if you don't know what sin is and you don't know that you're a sinner, you certainly are not going to be looking for any kind of forgiveness. The true danger of the postmodern world idea that there is no sin is that this causes a person not to look for the solution to sin, which is Jesus Christ. For the Christian, however, the commandments are important because even though his sins are forgiven, when he believes in Christ, repents, is baptized, uh, Acts chapter two, uh, that person needs to know about sin and how to deal with it on a daily basis in order to grow uh, spiritually in Christ. This growth process is called sanctification. Now, the greatest confusion in the mind of a new Christian is usually understanding the difference between salvation and sanctification. Let me explain. First of all, salvation is a one-time event where God, because of His grace, forgives us of all of our sins. This takes place when we express our faith in Jesus through repentance and baptism. There are many passages that uh, speak to this. Uh, uh, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Mark 16, 15, 16, and uh, Acts uh, chapter two, verses 37, 38. At this point, all of our sins are gone forever 
and we are saved from being condemned to hell. Now, I tell people we are never more saved than the day that we're baptized. It's, it's a one time, once for all time event. And let's read that passage that uh, I've mentioned several times so far in Acts chapter two, verse 38. Peter on the day of Pentecost has preached the gospel to the crowd, uh, you know, uh, teaching them that they are responsible for having crucified their own uh, Messiah. And at some point in Acts 2.37, uh, someone in the crowd yells out to Peter, you know, men and brethren, what should we do? What are we going to do now? What do we need to do to be saved? And so Peter answers in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, he says, Peter said to them, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. There's the forgiveness. And then he says, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Another passage that um, explains this uh, to a point is Romans chapter eight, verse one, where Paul says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because their sins have been uh, forgiveness, so, uh, forgiven rather. So uh, that's salvation. Salvation means your sins are forgiven, you're justified, you are righteous before God, meaning you're acceptable in His eyes. You're not perfect, but you're acceptable in His eyes. Why? Your sins are forgiven, they're covered over uh, with the blood of Christ. That's salvation. That's a one-time event. It happens one time. All right. Sanctification, on the other hand, is a process where God, through His Word and His Spirit, matures the individual in Christ. At baptism, we're saved, we're born again. These things mean the same thing. It describes the same thing. As a matter of fact, in the New Testament, the New Testament describes salvation using all kinds of metaphors. Salvation, transferred from the, uh, the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. All these things mean the same thing. It means an individual is saved. Through sanctification, however, we grow up to become like Christ. It's a process, it takes time uh, over a number of years. In Ephesians chapter four, verse 11 to 16, Paul describes this process of sanctification. He writes, and he, meaning God, Christ, gave some as apostles and gave to the church. He's talking about the church here. So he says, and he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we're no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into Him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Notice how many times he talks about growth development, the body, of course, meaning the church, you know, referring to all Christians together. That's the, the body of Christ. And so knowing about sinfulness in this process is very important. It's important for both of these things. For salvation, you have to know that you're a sinner and what sin is in order to reach out for forgiveness. But for the process of self, uh, sanctification, knowing about the commandments is also very important as well. And that's, you know, that's where the commandments actually come in, in the process of sanctification. For example, you have to be aware of sin and its consequences before you seek salvation. We mentioned that already. The commandments describe clearly and pointedly the moral failure in our lives and they warn us of the consequences. So that's how they serve us uh, as far as salvation is concerned. Now, once we are saved, we need to be aware of sin and its effects in order to deal with it in our own daily life and minister to others who are struggling with it. Just because we become Christians doesn't mean we don't sin anymore. We, we continue to sin, we, you know, we try hard, we try to do our best, so on and so forth, but we often fail. 
So we have to understand the psychology of sin, the process of it, how it works, how it attacks us, how to overcome it. And the knowledge of the commandments is very important in this process. We're not earning our salvation. That's not what I'm saying. We're not earning our salvation when we struggle with sin each day. Jesus has already done this with his death on the cross. And I read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul says, so that no man may boast before God, but by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. So when we struggle with sin, we're following in the steps of Jesus as faithful disciples. And this process is called sanctification. Paul was referring to it before, it didn't mention the word sanctification, but he mentioned the idea that we're growing up in Christ. That's a process. That doesn't happen in just a moment or a day. That doesn't happen like salvation. That takes place in a moment. But sanctification is a process that lasts actually all of our Christian lives. This process is important because in Christianity, as in natural life, you grow or you die. It's not enough for a, you know, a little baby to be born, for example. Um, that baby has to develop physically and, and emotionally or else it will die as a, as a baby. Well, it's the same thing with Christian, uh, Christian life. Uh, it's not enough that we are born again uh, through faith in Christ expressed in repentance and baptism. We must also grow up in Christ or else we'll be, you know, we'll shrivel up and we'll become sickly and die, spiritually speaking. And so the Ten Commandments are God's tools to help conceive and deliver us as Christian babes. And they are also important to promote normal, healthy growth to spiritual uh, adulthood. And so when the commandments point out sin in our lives, exactly what they're supposed to do, here are some helpful ways to respond positively. Number one, don't be afraid. Don't be upset. No one likes to have their faults pointed out. No one. But remember, this is God talking to you and he has a right to do so because he has no faults. So when the commandments point out your sin, see this as an opportunity to eliminate something that is stopping your progress in Christ. Number two, when the commandments convict you of sin, be honest with God. I mean, if there is sin in your life, admit it to him. This is always the first step in combating sin in your personal life. You can't grow if you don't abandon sin and you don't abandon sin if you don't acknowledge its existence uh, to begin with. If you're honest with God, he will not only forgive you, this is what John talks about in 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 7 to 9. So he'll not only forgive you, he will give you the strength that you need to deal with this sin from now on and ultimately eliminate it from your life. And so when the commandments convict you of sin, don't be afraid, don't be upset, be honest with God. Number three, be patient. Be patient. It takes a long time to win over certain sins in our lives. The commandments only point out sin. They don't solve problems. Jesus is the one that solves the problems and he does it in his own way and in his own time. It doesn't all happen in a single, in a single day. It may happen in a single day that you realize, oh, you know, the commandments are pointing out you know, something missing, something that we're not doing right. But the solution to that, the elimination of that, the improvement of that, the, 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 the victory over that, that may take uh, a long time. That's why we say sanctification is a, is a process. Jesus gives us freely salvation and he promises to be with us each day as we grow up into a mature Christian in Christ. Okay, well, that's our first lesson. Just looking at that question, what, what relevance does uh, that uh, do the Ten Commandments have for us today. Uh, if you stay uh, with the uh, video, uh, several questions will now appear uh, to get your discussion group uh, going. Thank you, and we'll see you for the, uh, for the next lesson in this series. God bless. Discussion questions. Number one, did you learn the Ten Commandments as a child or as an adult? Number two, 
Did you ever take them personally? Number three, has any one of the Ten Commandments seemed particularly important or meaningful to you over the others? Number four, was there any sin you were especially relieved to be forgiven at baptism? Can you share this experience? Number five, what do you feel is the biggest obstacle stopping Christians from growing in Christ? Number six, how do you react when God points out one of your sins? Number seven, would you be willing to memorize the Ten Commandments? <laughs>